All right, guys, I am having the hardest time doing videos today. I think just too much guiding, not enough YouTube and lately. But in the words of Bill O'Reilly, we'll do it live. So let's jump in here. So what I wanna talk about today is an item, a piece of gear in a general technology that I think is gonna be disruptive to the entire hunting industry. And in particular, for the Western big game hunting part of that world, it's going to have massive impact. And what I'm talking about is image stabilization binoculars. If you're somebody where glassing is a big component of your hunting strategy, this is going to be a huge change in the next three or four years. Yes, they've been around for two or three years, but they're finally getting some traction. In this last season, this last fall, I did four guided hunts using six Zulu sixes, and then I did two personal hunts with the same set of binoculars. The reason I haven't had an opinion on this in the past is I hadn't had the opportunity, that big chunk of time like I did this fall, to try out the product, try out the technology. And honestly, I was a bit hesitant. I think I had some bias. I was hoping that they wouldn't be quite as effective as they actually were. And the reason is, is I'm, I'm a little entrenched because if you look at a lot of my old videos, you're gonna see that I've been a huge proponent of really, really high optical glass, put on nice tripods, good tripod heads, using that to control and stabilize the binoculars. That's gonna get you to see more game when you're out hunting than anything else. So I've pounded on that a lot. I've had my system that I've been entrenched in, but I was exposed enough to this technology and this particular binocular to tell you that it's just better. I can be more effective on the majority of hunts that I'm doing personally and guiding with image stabilization binoculars than my old system. Obviously, this sounds like an ad. I can tell you that nobody's paid me shit to do this video. And I can also tell you that there's probably folks out there in the hunting gear industry that would have liked to pay me to not do this video. And I touch on that a whole bunch in my videos and it's a theme of my channel also. Generally, I have some friction with the hunting gear industry because the hunting gear industry is always trying to sell you the next new little feature, the next new slight variation so they can keep you on that recurring revenue titty that they like financially, right? But there's a downside as a hunter, as somebody who's going up the learning curve, who's becoming a better hunter. I think people way discount the downside to ever-changing gear. I can't tell you how many people I've been guiding, and it could be the same guy I've guided year after year, and he's always got a new rifle, he's always got a new backpack tent, he's always got a new, a new optic, right? And he's always spending critical time that he's in the field where he could be focused on the hunt and the goal of the hunt, or focused on the secondary goal of what, you know, all hunts, and that's getting up the learning curve and getting better at the skill set. Instead of focusing on that, he's fiddle fucking around with his gear, integrating it in to his system, figuring it out, all of those things. So there is a big downside to always changing gear. I've got a video called The Truth About the Hunting Gear Industry. I'll stick a link up right here. You can go check it out. I get really deep in the weeds there. But that, again, creates some bias when it comes to me changing gear because I truly believe the bar has to be very high. And there's essentially three criteria in image stabilization binoculars fall into that and they deliver. One, it has to simplify things. Image stabilization binoculars absolutely simplify things. I personally think that big 15 powered binoculars on tripods like the SLCs and other nice 15s that have been essential to a lot of my hunting for the last decade, I personally think that IS binoculars, you know, IS binoculars that are 12 to 16 power that you're hand holding with the stabilization technology, they have made 15 power binoculars obsolete in my opinion. We'll dive into some other features of these binoculars that even simplify things more depending on the situation, but you for sure get simplicity. And then if you're gonna integrate a new piece of gear, it has to make you more effective and it's gotta be substantial to justify the fact that you're gonna fiddle around with it and you've gotta integrate it, right? Image stabilization, I've always been a big proponent of it. I've got a bunch of videos on my YouTube channel that talk about the importance of stabilizing binoculars. I talk about framing with your body. I talk about using a tripod system, all of that to control and stabilize the binoculars. 
And the reason being is like I've said many times, stabilization is the key to finding game. A lot of people think they're seeing deer, they think they're seeing color, but what they're actually seeing is movement. And it's relative movement. It's movement relative to your binoculars. So if you've got a lot of movement in your optic, a spotter or binoculars, it's much harder to pick up those tiny movements in the game animal. So it's all about stabilization. In this case, with the IS binoculars, we're talking about doing that with technology. Where in the past, I've done it with gear, right? So we're delivering the same thing in two different ways. Now, the difference with IS binoculars and the reason that I say they bring the incremental effectiveness margin that you need to justify moving over to them, you can now get that stabilization without the extra gear. So if I'm archery hunting or if I'm guiding archers and I've got a bugle in my hand or I've got my bow in my hand, I can reach into my chest harness, pull out my IS binoculars and I can look click them on and I have st I have a stable view, right? It's just like putting those binoculars on a tripod. Now, I could tell you that yes, I can get the exact same view if I take those binoculars and put them on a tripod very close. To me, when I look at binoculars on a tripod that are non-IS or IS binoculars, in my view, you can get very similar results. On the ones on the tripod, they have better optical quality typically. There just isn't the high, high, high end optics yet that have the IS, but you're way more effective with the IS binoculars because you can pull them out and you don't have to frame, you don't have to get a tripod out. So there's a huge jump in effectiveness right there. And another great example is if you're in a vehicle, if you're in a boat, that IS technology is going to deliver something that a tripod based binocular cannot. So there's a huge leap there in effectiveness. The third thing is it's got to save you money. And in my view, these binoculars, the Zulu 6s, I'm sure there's other options out there too. If you move in to that, that optic, you're going to end up getting rid of and adjusting some of your optical system. And a lot of you are going to end up saving a thousand dollars, a couple thousand dollars at a bare minimum by moving into IS. So that's the trifecta. You've got simplicity, You've got better effectiveness and they cost less. Unfortunately, two of those are counter to the industry as a whole, right? The hunting gear industry, they don't like simplicity and they don't like lower price for the same amount of effectiveness. Really, all three are counter to the hunting business, right? The hunting business wants to give you gear that makes you more effective. They do want to provide a great product, but they generally don't want simplicity and they don't want low prices because that means less recurring revenue to them. So IS, I believe, is going to be slow to be adopted and you're going to see less content out there. You're going to see less push for it because a lot of the hunting gear industry, the optic industry and otherwise and all these different relationships, they're not going to push the IS binocular until maybe certain companies have a competing product because the IS binocular is making a big chunk of this gear obsolete and, they're, and that's gonna take away a bunch of the revenue. Not necessarily shift it because the Zulu 6s are only $1,000, right? So that's pretty cheap when you compare it to high-end optics. That's a value deal, that's a value, that's a value pair of binoculars, but they replace a bunch of other things. In my view, at a bare minimum, my Zulu 6s, the 12s, they replace my 15s. On a lot of hunts, they're gonna replace my tripod and they're gonna replace the pan head that's on my tripod. We're talking thousands of dollars of savings that the hunting gear industry is not going to see if people shift to these IS binoculars. So naturally, I think that's a reason that we're seeing low adoption and we're not seeing the massive exposure of this technology. But enough with all that shit, let's jump into the nitty gritty of these binoculars and I can show you some of the features and show you some of the pros and cons. There's way more pros than there are cons probably already feels like that. I'm kind, of, I'm kind of going crazy on this, but let's dive into those nitty gritty details and talk about it. Okay, so here's the Zulu 6s. These are the 12s. These are the newer versions. So they actually have two modes. Control it just right here with the button. You slide it forward and it's on. Gives you an indicator right there. And then if you do it twice, 
you get a secondary mode, which is the more stable mode. And that's for once you have a target. I think they call it like target acquired mode or something like that. If I just click it on one time, that's gonna give me like the scan mode, which is, which is a less intense stabilization, but it allows me to scan looking for game. Now, once I've acquired a target, like I'm, let's say I'm looking at a bull in Colorado and I wanna know if it's legal or not, so I need to count points, I'll do it twice. So on once and then quickly on again. And this is going to double down on the stabilization in that target mode. So I'm gonna be able to pick out those little nitty gritty details because there's even more stabilization, all right? So it's easy, it's very functional, very ergonomic. One of my fears about IS technology because I have looked through them years ago. I've looked through them in the fishing world. People have been, people on boats have been using image stabilization in their optics when they're looking for birds. You know, particularly bill fishermen have had IS binoculars for a long period of time, IS optics for a long period of time. And one thing about them that I noticed back then is I got a little woozy and I, a little like seasickness with them, a little motion sickness, and I'm prone to that in a lot of parts of my life. Like I, I've never been able to p play first person shooter games even as a kid. I haven't been able to pay, play those video games because I get motion sick. I don't know what it is because I don't get motion sick in the airplane. I don't get motion sick on a boat typically, but I am prone to that. And I felt that in IS technology years ago so I was scared of that with the, this type of binocular when they started to come out in the hunting world. And that's another reason why I probably wasn't a real early adopter. But the trick I was given, and it for sure works, is I've developed a habit of ha they're off all the time. But before I bring them up to my eyes, I turn that on and bring it up. And the stabilization is already on and I don't get any motion sickness at all. I haven't had a problem. I've glassed for hours and hours with these things, so no problem. And then what I do is I always make sure and turn it off. Now, it will turn off on its own to save battery, but if you're in a vehicle and there's constant movement, it, what it is is it's, it's got a simple brain, right? It thinks you're still glassing, so it doesn't want to shut off on you, so that will run off the battery. If you turn on the stabilization and then drive around and these are bouncing around in your harness, you're gonna run your battery down. A lot of people have asked me about the battery life. It's pretty long. Like I went through one season, let's see, seven hunts, six, well, basically six and a half hunts and I'm still on one double A. And the thing is, is it's just one double A. So just carry an extra double A. I really don't think the battery part of this should be an issue at all. I don't view it as a con at all. They're obviously very efficient with power usage. Okay, so when we talk about the actual image stabilization, I'll show you some side-by-sides here. I'm, I'm down in the Caribbean right now, but I'll even take them down when I'm looking for bait or birds hitting bait. I'll show you some of those comparisons because those are the real test. We're talking about holding binoculars in 10 to 20 mile hour winds, looking for birds you know, way out in the ocean. That is very difficult to do. It's very hard conditions, so I'll show you those. I'll show you some Western big game applications. You can compare those. But I would say that the stabilization, the scan mode, you know, the first mode, is very similar to when I put my 15s or even if I put my chest 10 powered EL range binoculars onto a tripod it's very similar stabilization, very close. We're obviously looking at two different optical qualities, right? The lenses in these Zulu 6s are not near as good. Maybe lenses is not the term, but the combination of lenses in these are not near as good as my SLCs or EL ranges or my ATX spotter, right? But the stabilization component of it is a very comparable tripod to these, right? And then I would argue that the, uh, the target mode that advanced more stabilization in these binoculars, when you put that on, that's actually going to be more stable than my tripod based binoculars. And you're probably thinking like, how the hell could that be the case? Your tripod binoculars are as solid as it gets. It doesn't matter what you do. If you've got a tripod, it, it, you know, when you're moving a little bit, you're breathing, you're touching, your eyes are against the optic. And a lot of times you have to set your you have to set your eyes against the optic when it's on a tripod. You're introducing movement, and that movement, there's nothing that's stopping it, right? In the IS binoculars, there is. So your eyes against the optic are transferring some movement to the optic. But when you turn on that technology, 
It's taking that movement away. That's not the case on a tripod. So these are actually maybe slightly better than a tripod based binocular because of that. Now let's touch on the optical quality thing. Basically two components of it. Are they as clear as a pair of $4,000 EL ranges? No, they're not. To me, they're still more effective because like I said in the beginning of this video, I can pull them out whenever I don't have to worry about framing. I basically have tripod based binoculars immediately. So to me, overall, the effectiveness is going to be better with these Zulu sixes over those $3,500 binoculars just because of that. But these binoculars are high magnification. So you've got 12, 16, SIG, SIG even makes a 20, right? But you're talking about the same objective size. So you're talking about a 42 millimeter objective. I think actually the tens have even a smaller objective. Nice thing about that is they're very light, very handy. That's a huge bonus of these things too. They fit in any harness. You could actually put these in like a side pocket or something like that and they're lightweight. They're less than two pounds. So you're saving weight there. But just mathematically, the exit pupil on these binoculars is going to be smaller than your eight by 42, 10 by 42, or even 15 by 56 bigger SLs, SLC Swaro binoculars, right? So that exit pupil, that ratio basically, right? Because I'm colorblind, I've always pushed for a bigger exit pupil. A lot of times I'll actually use an eight instead of a 10 just because I like that depth of color. And that depth of color comes from the mathematical fact that a bigger objective versus the magnification gives you more depth of color because you're gathering more light with that objective. Now, SIG, because the IS allows them to have higher magnification with these smaller binoculars. And the reason that is, is that you're looking, you know, 16 power binoculars typically in your hand are going to make somebody sick because there's so much motion. Even 12s make me sick. Seven out of 10 people, if they hold Swaro 15 power SLCs, they don't put them on a tripod, they just hold them and try to glass. Seven out of 10 people after 20 or 30 minutes are going to get motion sick. But SIG, because they have that IS in there and other, you know, IS providers are going to have the same ability, they can put a higher magnification in these binoculars without people getting sick because that IS controls the movement. The downside is they have a lower exit pupil, whereas an eight by 42 is going to be like a five exit pupil. And that makes a difference because you have more light gathering, particularly in low light situations. So one con right now of what's available with these binoculars is your low light performance. I don't care what other people say. If you pull out the IS com component of it, you pull off, you pull out the component of stabilizing the binoculars, the low light performance of these binoculars right now is going to be subpar to the traditional binoculars that we've had in the past. All right, guys, I had to go take a leak. I went back to where I was set up. The lighting was completely different. I had to take it outside. But back to talking the details on the uh, Zulu 6s. So the next con to consider is that on these Zulu 6s, your field of view is going to be close to half, maybe a little bit over half what you're seeing in a lot of these high-end optics like the NL Pures, the EL ranges, your field of view is much larger on those optics. The different magnifications have a little variation on that field of view, but overall that is a con of what's available right now. And the reason I keep saying on what's available right now is that's highly relevant. These cons that I'm mentioning, the optical quality, the field of view, the exit pupil, that really has nothing to do with image stabilization as far as I know. I'm guessing that image stabilization might be affected on the optical front some just because the complication of what goes into more and more lenses and coatings that might factor in when it comes to the image stabilization technology. But in general, I think it's really just a function of what's available. SIG is obviously targeting the chest binocular world with these binoculars, right? A very wide spectrum of hunters, a very wide spectrum of users. So the so small size of this 42 millimeter objective, the lightweight nature of it, it's actually, I said less than two pounds earlier, I think it's close to a pound and a half. So we're talking a very light binocular. So these aren't really cons of IS necessarily. They're cons of the binoculars you can buy 
that are right now implementing the IS technology. I'll dive back into what I think about that. Is that gonna change? Are there gonna be other options here in a minute? But I do wanna touch on two real cons of the IS technology, at least here in the short to midterm. I actually view it as a con that all the IS binoculars out there right now don't have any way to put them on a tripod. This is gonna sound very counterintuitive. I'm sure the companies out there that are producing these binoculars are like, hey, that's the point, Cliff. We don't want you to have to carry a tripod. Well, well, until there are spotting scopes that are mainstream with the technology and other options out there, I'm still gonna carry a high-end spotting scope. If I'm mountain goat hunting and I've gotta tell the difference between a nanny and a billy, if I've gotta do detailed scoring on elk or mule deer from a thousand yards away, I'm gonna to have to use a spotter I'm gonna be carrying my tripod, right? And because of that, I have that tripod available. I like to grid. It is a part of my glassing strategy. Once I've touched everything that I think is high potential, I've touched all the edges, the areas I know, all of that stuff, I will grid in long glassing sessions. So even with an IS binocular, I'd like the option to throw it on a tripod so I can lock in that pan head, go across the grid, go down, start another line. I like the idea of gridding. Right now, all the IS binoculars that I know of, they don't have tripod studs, stud, and actually like the adapters that go over the barrels are not gonna work on most of them because of the design, right? And I do view that as a con specific to the IS technology. Obviously, it's not like intertwined with the IS technology, but I don't see the manufacturers considering that as an option. So for me, I'm giving up gridding with my binoculars via a tripod, real OCD type of gridding. I do view that as a con. The last big one, which I did some research on, and it sounds like it is related to the image stabilization technology, and that's the lack of a rangefinder in the binoculars. It's probably gonna be a while before you see rangefinders implemented in to these chest binoculars that have the IS technology. And the primary reason that I've been told is not that it can't be done. Rangefinders can be put in these binoculars, but it takes down the efficiency of the battery life greatly, and it really increases the complexity of what's going on in the binoculars. You have to think about it in the sense that, yes, you put these up, you throw on the IS, and the image is stabilized, right? But the thing is, is if you throw a reticle on there that does the range finding, if you put that reticle on the vitals of an elk, you wanna make sure you're ranging the vitals of the elk and you're not actually ranging over the back of the elk 50 yards behind the elk. Well, when you introduce IS technology where you're controlling the movement of the binocular, you have to match that up with controlling that reticle so you're actually ranging what your eye is looking at, what the reticle is placed on. It turns out that matching those two up within the binocular takes a lot of battery life out of the binocular. So you're gonna end up with a whole lot more battery draw, and that means less simplicity in terms of the battery, right? You're not just gonna get away with a nice double A that lasts you many, many hunts, right? You're gonna have to have a more complex battery system. So that's an issue and that's why right now you're not seeing rangefinder options in these optics. And of course, the other thing is, is it's gonna up your price. Particularly for me as a guide, I like having rangefinders in my binoculars because it goes down to that simplicity thing. When I'm needing to range for somebody, I want to have it right there in the binocular. So this kind of unsimplifies my life a little bit and that's why I view it as a big con because now if I'm using an IS binocular, I have to have a separate rangefinder. So for me, that's a big con. It may change in the future, short term, mid term, long term. I don't know. My best guess is mid term to long term as far as this technology goes. All right, so now I got to go back to talking about the hunting industry and talk about some theory because a lot of the cons I just mentioned, they have to do with what happens here in the next two to three years or five years with IS binoculars, right? Because field of view, optical quality, rangefinder to some extent, exit pupil, when really when I say exit pupil, I mean varying degrees of objective size, all of those variables could be adjusted by the market, right? 
these brands like Sig or even Swaro or Zeiss or other optic companies that may or may not get into the IS business and provide IS optics, hypothetically they could provide a bunch more options and they could solve all these cons. And you're really just left with the upside of the technology. So one of the biggest cons here is that you're gonna go out and you're gonna spend $1,000 on an optic. And I realize that $1,000 is a lot of money to people, but I mean, really reflecting on this video, guys, I've essentially told you that that $1,000 is going to replace, who knows, six, $8,000 worth of historical optics, or historical systems, but it is what it is, it's still $1,000. So a big con is you go out and spend $1,000 on a new set of SIG Zulu 6s or whatever IS compatible option out there, but you're in the same price range. You spend $1,000 and then over the next 18 months, a bunch of variations come out that address those issues, right? Different fields of view, better optical quality, bigger objectives, and that's gonna address the exit pupil thing. So all these things get taken care of. And then even hypothetically, maybe I'm in total la la land and you know, the next 12 months, a range finding IS binocular will come out. So all those could be addressed. And now you've just spent a thousand dollars on what's still useful. It's still a good optic, but it's a paperweight in terms of resale value and you're just gonna wanna upgrade. So you're basically out the thousand bucks, right? That's probably one of the biggest cons that you're thinking about. So I've got to chime in on that and this is gonna take us back to a discussion about the hunting gear industry. As these companies wade in this technology, they're gonna be worried shitless with the idea that they may cannibalize different optic offerings they have right now. Think about what Swaro and these other high-end optic companies offer right now, right? They've got chest binoculars, they've got range-finding chest binoculars, they've got big binos like your 15s, they've got your spotting scopes, they've got all these different variations of optics, and they've purposely designed that offering so there's not a lot of overlap in terms of use case, so you feel like you've gotta buy all of them, right? This kinda goes back to my whole theory on the hunting gear industry, right? This is just one of their plays. It's really not the hunting gear industry, it's just business. They wanna have a certain type of product offering, so you want a bunch of different things, right? So they've done that on purpose. Now, the problem with IS, as they introduce this, is the technology is gonna make it so certain products cannibalize other products. There's an argument to say that if Swirl came out with a 15 by 56 binocular, that had IS in it, that the vast, vast majority of hunts out west, mule deer hunts, elk hunts, mountain goat hunts, bighorn sheep hunts, all of that, the only optic somebody would need to carry is that 15 by 56 IS binocular. The reason being is they'd have a huge field of view with a bigger objective, they'd have enough magnification to potentially judge animals from a very far distance. 15 magnification combined with image stabilization is gonna be very comparable to the current high-end 30 magnification spotters. I would guess, I mean, this is hypothetical, I haven't seen that, but I would guess that it's gonna be very comparable if not better. So you, all of a sudden you take spotters out of the picture for 90% of hunters, and then you take your chest binoculars out of the picture for 90% of hunters too. So if they made the perfect optic with the image stabilization, a 15 by 56 range finding binocular, all of a sudden people don't need a chest binocular, they don't need a spotter, they only need that one optic. To me, that's counter to their business practices historically, so I think it's gonna be a very slow progression for these high-end optic companies to do that. So I think actually what you're gonna see is you're gonna see players like SIG and maybe even others who can get a hold of the technology. I don't know, you know what it looks like around the IP, the patents, that sort of thing, but assuming other companies can get into this game and they can use the image stabilization technology, I think what you're gonna see is you're gonna see them slowly, incrementally, you're gonna see better glass, better optical quality, different lenses, different coatings, things that the high end guys are mastering right now. These companies like SIG, and I'm assuming there's gonna be other entrants too, that are embracing this IS technology, what they're gonna do is they're gonna slowly 
improve those metrics, that's gonna take them time because they don't have that in their back pocket now. Sure, the high-end companies like Swaro, Zeiss, these really high-end expensive opt optic companies that have those in their back pocket, they could do it quickly. They could probably put out a 15 by 56 range finding IS binocular tomorrow, but they won't because they don't wanna cannibalize their own offerings they have right now. That's my opinion, and that kind of forms my view on this big con that if you buy these, you're gonna have a $1,000 brick in the future. I don't think that's gonna be the case. Sure, at some point, maybe three, five years out, that will be the case, maybe even later than that, but I think it's gonna be a slow buildup because of that industry dynamic. All right, guys, so I hope you found that useful. If you take your hunting serious and you're doing a lot of glassing, I highly recommend you go out and buy a pair of these Zulu 6s or something comparable out there and get a feel for this image stabilization. Sure, you know, use them through a season before you unload a tripod or unload your 15s. That might be extreme to do right off the bat, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna find that these are an awesome change to your gear system. If you have a different opinion about image stabilization, please leave it in the comments. This is all relatively new to me and I'm learning about the technology every day. If you found this video useful, do me a huge favor, like it and subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys later.